Shabbat Shalom and welcome to B'nai Yeshua Synagogue, home of the Miami Beach Israel Revival. It's wonderful to have you with us today in this today's very important service. We're going to start today's service with worship and dancing and singing unto Yahweh Elohim and Yeshua our King. Afterwards, we're going to go right into the word of Yahweh, honoring the Father Yahweh in his true name and his son Yahshua our King. Get ready to experience a move of the Ruach HaKodesh right here in Miami Beach, in the Miami Beach Israel Revival. And again, I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts to all our YATA Video Club members for subscribing to this teaching series. We pray and we hope that it will bless you, edify you, and raise you up in the things of Yahweh as Yahweh's word is sent forth from Miami Beach to the four corners of the globe. Shalom in Yahshua's name. Now let's go right into this afternoon's service. Of the message that we began last week entitled The Great Alma Controversy. The Great Alma Controversy. We just got back from Knoxville, and some of the things that I want to share with you today will help you to defend your faith against the anti missionaries, against those who want to steal your faith, against those who want to question the validity of of your faith. How many were here last week and enjoyed the message? Yes. Good. Alright, so if you weren't here you can get a copy. Turn with me please to Yeshayahu 7 14. Yeshayahu, Isaiah, Yeshayahu 7 14. Let me quickly review and then I need to make my points and I need to wrap this up today. Turn to your neighbor and say he needs to wrap this up today. Now, and I, and I, and I, let me just give you a little recap of last week. The anti-missionaries, the non-Jewish believers, those who do not believe in the virgin birth, which is a necessity for salvation. I do not believe you can be saved without truly believing in the virgin birth. Let me clarify that by saying the virgin birth is not the Immaculate Conception. Last week we discussed that. Most of us thought that, oh yeah, sure, we believe in the Immaculate Conception. We believe Miriam was a virgin. We're not talking about the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is a Roman Catholic doctrine. We do not subscribe to that popery. The Immaculate Conception is a false doctrine that Miriam was born without sin by the intervention of the Ruach HaKodesh, and as such, she was able to be the co-redemptress or the co-savior with Yeshua for the world. And we do not subscribe to the fact that Mary or Miriam was uh, conceived immaculately. She was a sinner because according to Luke 1, 47, it says, My spirit has rejoiced in Elohim, my savior. So we reject completely the Immaculate Conception. And there are many Jews and many believing Jews or believers in general especially traditional Jews, who think that if you believe in the virgin birth, you believe in the Immaculate Conception. Turn to your neighbor and say, we don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is not of Yahweh, it is a doctrine that is not of the Father. Are you with me? We believe in the virgin birth because Isaiah believed in the virgin birth, because Yahweh believed in the virgin birth, because the prophets believed in the virgin birth, and we believe all things that are written in the scriptures about Yeshua, and the anti-missionaries are using our lack of intelligence, our lack of education, our lack of understanding, our lack of being read and grown and raised in the word of Yahweh to prey on our lack of understanding, to get many of our brothers and sisters to fall away from the truth that is in the Messiah Yeshua. And so last week we learned, we can use that TV light over there, okay, if we need some more light. Plug it in. Just plug that in. Let's, let's, let's get with the program, guys. We're on now. Let's go. Let's get that plugged in. Okay. Now, if you look at Yeshayahu, Isaiah 7, 12, Ahaz said, I do not ask for try Yahweh. So Yahweh spoke to King Ahaz. King Ahaz was the wicked king of Judah in the south. Was Ahaz a good king or a wicked king? He was a wicked king. And so Isaiah says to King Ahaz, Yahweh speaking 
through Isaiah, says, Yahweh said to Ahaz, Ask a sign for yourself from Yahweh. What is the Hebrew word for sign? Alt. Ask an alt, a miracle, and Yahweh will give you, make it deep, make deep the request, make it high. Meaning, Yahweh says, I'm about to give you such an incredible revelation that what you ask, don't hold back. Ask for an amazing, miraculous, incredible sign, because what I'm going to share with you is incredible, miraculous, amazing, and it's deep, and I'm going to make my point, whether you want me to or don't want me to, Ahaz, phasing phasing himself to be humble, phasing himself to be righteous, phase, pretending to be a tzaddik, when he wasn't a tzaddik, he says in verse 12, I will tempt, ask Yahweh. I am too small, he is too righteous. He's feigning humility. He's acting humble and, and, and showing humility when he has none. He's a wicked, evil, and adulterous king. Are you with me? And so Yahweh says, Yahweh says to Ahaz, Ahaz, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. I know your heart. How many know that man looketh at the outside, but Yahweh looketh at the heart? When the, when the sons of Jesse were paraded in front of Shmuel, he th they, all the prophet, the prophet thought all of them were ready to be candidates to be king of Israel. And Yahweh says, no, 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 no. I'm going to tell you who it is because man looks at the outside and Yahweh looks at the heart. Yes. Is anyone with me? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, Yahweh looks at the heart. Yahweh looks at the heart. And so in verse 13, he says, no, this revelation is so deep and so high that I'm going to give it to you, Ahaz, despite your false humility. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. He says, hear now, house of David. Is it not enough that you weary man, that you weary my Elohim also? So he's saying, this sign will be given, must be given, has to be given. Can, nothing can hold back this, this oath. And whether Ahaz is humble or not, I'm not impressed. This sign is not for Ahaz. Now the traditional Jews, the anti-missionaries, those who teach against the virgin birth say that Yahweh is talking to Ahaz and this, this sign of the coming Alma, the virgin giving birth, is a sign to Ahaz and not to Israel about the Messiah. Right? Wrong. Because in verse 13, Yahweh says, I was talking to you, but I'm not talking to you anymore. Now I'm addressing my remarks because I'm going to bind on your heart. You're, you're unrighteous, you're wicked, you're deceitful and sinful. Now I'm talking directly to the entire house of David. Right. He changes the subject. The one who he's addressing. Rule number one of biblical hermeneutics is who is Yahweh talking to? He's talking now to the entire Beit David. How many tribes in the house of David? Twelve. Twelve. He's no longer talking to Ahaz. Now look. Verse 13. Oh house of David, your king's not righteous. Your king's not right. He's saying, is it enough you weary men? Now you're going to weary my Elohim also. Now those words, as we learned last week, you are plural. He can't be talking to Ahaz because the word you is what? Plural, speaking of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now the anti-missionaries and the Jews who reject Yeshua, who believe that we're crazy, we're stupid, we're beside ourselves, we're nuts, we've gone off our rocker because we believe in the Immaculate Conception, are wrong. We don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. We're not papists. We're not Catholics. <laughs> Roberto has another word. I'm not going to use it. All right? We're not. And so we don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. We do believe in the solid scriptural position that Israel heard, the house of David. Yahweh speaks to the entire house of David and says, O oh, house of David, you've got a king who's wearing me, and you're wearing me, and I'm going to reveal this to you whether you like it or not. It's important. I've got to get it out there. Are you with me? It's important enough that I've got to get it out there. And I'm going to deliver this word, whether your king wants to hear it, Judah, and whether the house of David, you want to weary me and play the same tricks Ahaz is playing. It doesn't matter what tricks, what games you want to play. This is so important, so deep, and it...